from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. We continue to look at the Broncos draft picks and what kind of impact they might have in year one and beyond. I thought this would be a fun exercise today, Ben, as we take a look at those draft picks and think about how the camp competitions might start to play out. Of course, they're going to have OTAs coming up. We have mandatory mini camps, so on and so forth. But as we get into training camp, you do wonder with these rookies, what opportunities will present them? What can they earn in year one? Because oftentimes with rookies, especially as we get into the day three guys, you're thinking, okay, beyond that, what can they do special teams, so on and so forth. But let's start with Nick Benito. Okay. So Nick Benito is going to come in here. He's the Broncos top draft pick at 64 overall. Now, most of the time on day two picks, you're thinking, okay, if we can get them to be a starter by year two, year three, so on and so forth, then you're thinking that's great return on investment. But in this case, Nick Benito might actually be pushing for bigger snaps, even in year one. He, he might be, and, and he needs to be available to be a situational pass rush kind of guy with uh, with pass rushers, when they come in the NFL, the biggest thing is they don't most of the time know how to set the edge in the run game on top of that. You almost don't have to worry about that with Benito. You could bring him in strictly on uh, boat race packages, you know, third and long, second and long, where you know it's gets pin your ear back time and go uh, and give one of your other guys a rest, give a Randy Gregory or Bradley Chubb a rest. And so uh, I think he can make an impact to your one in, in that regard, being a sub package pass rusher type guy that can hopefully grow into an every down guy. And, and it feels like with Nick Benito, the conversations almost immediately started with like, okay, well, after this year, when the Broncos have some decisions to make a pass rusher, Bradley Chubb, et cetera, then, okay, well, that may be where he steps into a starting role. But the point you bring up about who's the next guy up in pass rush, is it going to be Malik Reed? Is it going to be Jonathan Cooper, who we saw last year? Should it be Nick Benito? And that's where I think that this thing is kind of interesting. Can he earn that role out of camp? Do you force that role out of camp? Well, I don't think you force it. I think you make the guys earn it, and whoever earns it earns it, and you go from there. If it's Malik Reed, it's Malik Reed. If it's Jonathan Cooper, it's Jonathan Cooper. You, uh, that, that's the point. Like football is the great equalizer because it doesn't matter in the end where you were drafted. If you can play better, then you play better, and smart coaches will realize that and and, and make you, give you more reps. So, um, no, I, I don't think you force it. I think you try to give everybody the opportunity to win the job. Um, but much like our new quarterback, Russell Wilson, when he was drafted, sometimes a guy's just going to come in and take it from somebody who was expected to win it. And I think that's what you need. You need that kind of competition to do that. Yeah. I guess for Nick Benito, it has to be sort of those undeniable kind of moments, right? Where he comes out and he just shows these flashes where you're just like, we can't keep this guy off the field. Right. How do we find more ways to get this guy? Exactly. Field? And, and Pat Sertan was a little bit like that too. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, and I, there was a certain uh, group of media members that were saying he has to play He's your first round pick. He has to play, but he was one of those things you said it coaching staffs they want to see you earn that yeah hey you're our top guy Mm -hmm. we believe in you we already showed you that by drafting you now you gotta you gotta reciprocate and show us why that was a good faith investment yeah and that's i mean like i said with 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 athletic competition and with with football in particular it's one of the reasons we love the sport so much in the end it doesn't matter doesn't matter who you were you know where where you come from, what you did, whatever. At the end of the day, can you play? Get get them on the field. And let's let's let it go. All right, so let's get to Greg Dulcich. This one's a really intriguing one because some of it is tied to how much the Broncos will use tight ends. Mm-hmm. And Albert Okawebenom, if he remains healthy, then he is going to be the starting tight end. He is tight end one, and I sort of feel like Eric Tomlinson immediately slots in as tight end two. We'll leave uh, Andrew Beck out of this conversation for just a minute and say that his a little bit more of a gadget role, H back kind of thing. But for Greg Dulcich, how does he see the field quicker? Oh man, making big plays vertically down the field because and, and showing that you can track the ball well because he's not the best blocker right now. So you don't need to suddenly improve your blocking. That's going to come with time. What you need to be is the best receiver you can be right now and a reliable one at that. Uh, and if you can do that, you're going to see targets, you know, kind of thrown your way. Um, he does need to improve the blocking and we'll get there. But but Tomlinson, by virtue of his skill set, is tight end too. I mean, usually the t- the second tight end is not necessarily a big time pass catcher. He's, he's just a bl- an extra tackle out there to give you more protection. So, um, and, and if the Broncos are going to be running, you know, too tight outside zone, which, um, you know, they, they call uh, the Tiger package or 12 personnel, then, then one of those guys is going to be in there. You want the extra blocker because, you know, you want to build off that. So, um, I, I think he just needs to go out there and, and be good at what he does, which is catch balls, get open and catch balls. If he can do that, you'll find ways to get him on the field. And then if he finds ways to get on the field, he's going to find ways to improve his blocking. All right. Damari Mathis, the fourth rounder for the Broncos out of pit. It seems like we, we really like what his potential could be for this team, 
but it's, I wouldn't say it's a crowded cornerback room, but there are enough guys at the top of the cornerback room that it's going to be tough to get starter snaps. He might be just like looking for some rotational opportunities. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, barring an injury, barring an injury, he, he's not going to, he's not going to be in on nickel packages. He's a dime or quarter guy and you're going to need, uh, and he's going to need to show that he can be that guy. And in order to show to be that guy, you gotta show a, you can play on the slot. You're going to have to show that you can, uh, that you've got good instincts as far as run fits go and that you're a willing hitter, uh, in, in the run game, because the slot corners in this defense are required uh, to be run fit guys. So that's, that's part of the reason they went out and got K1 to begin with because yep. he's so good at that. So, um, and in order to do that, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to hope that you're better at that than Kareem Jackson. I mean, well, that, he's that's, saying Bassey, I guess. I mean, you're Bassey, just, Ojemudia, I mean, yeah. whomever is going to be, you know, in that role, you, you've just got to be the guy to be that role. So I'd say you got to go out there and excel. You got to be a good, you know, past defender and all that, but you got the, the beyond that, you're going to have to show that, that you could be a run fits guy and a run support guy when needed. I'm, I'm completely locked up with you. And that that's the thing he's going to do some special teams work, get almost guaranteed on that. And then you just have to wonder, okay, if, unless there's an injury, where does he see the field? But I think that he's a guy based on his skill set, could show some stuff in year one. If he's given an opportunity, uh, any was uh, who we both like at Iowa state, that's going to be interesting because the defensive line is already a rotational position. Mm -hmm. But again, some of this, in my opinion, comes down to where's McTelvin Aguim at. Also, where's Mike Purcell at? We had, you can sort of set your watch. Shelby Harris is, was about as consistent as it possibly could be. Mm -hmm. Draymond Jones had developed into consistent defensive tackle. So for me, it's, it's more about the guys immediately in front of him. Can he show that he should be on the field instead of those? Can he be versatile enough, move up and down the line? That's a good one. You're going to have to create opportunities for yourself. It's a crowded room, you know, and and you're going to have to create opportunities for yourself. And so when they put you in, you know, with the three, you got to show you can handle that at the five, even if they kick you out to the seven, you got to be able to show you can handle that. And, you know, he's a guy that's, that's tape is better than his times, but you know, at the same time, um, you, 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 every opportunity, every rep you get, you've got to show, you got to go in there and show out, make it undeniable that they got to keep you on the field. I'd say the same thing for every one of these guys, make it undeniable, make it, make it difficult for the coach to, to take you off the field. If they can't find a way, then you're going to be on there and you're going to be shining anyway. Okay. Let's take a look at the fifth rounders here. We'll, we'll take them a little bit of in a group to Laren. Turner yell safety out of Oklahoma, Montreal, Washington wide receiver out of Samford, who we think has a, possibility to be the returner and Luke Wattenberg uh, of those three guys who do you think has the biggest role I guess I already know that with Montreal Washington but um, what what are the, what do their roles look like this upcoming year I think Washington's a primary punt kick guy I mean in a, in a perfect world that's what they envisioned for him um, you know with Wattenberg a little different he's probably backing up the guard and center positions the left guard and the, and the center position um, I think that's the ideal fit for him uh, and, and, you know, I think that he's got to show that he's capable of handling that. He probably needs to put on a little weight, but he, he needs to show that he's capable of handling both those positions. So, uh, but Washington, I mean, to me, that one's obvious. It's, you know, it's going to be the starting punt kick. And if he offers something in, in, in receiving as well, that's so much the bonus. And then Turner yell might be more of the, Hey, what's the battle look like with, with Jamar Johnson, how, yeah, as Jamar far Johnson, as, PJ Locke. Am I yeah. kicking these guys off the roster and, and and making my way? He's probably more of a practice squad type guy that needs to needs to learn a few things. But um, you know, he he certainly has some of the things you can't coach already, and that's that's a big plus. So how quickly does he adapt to the scheme? Okay, the final one, last two picks: Matt Henningsen, defensive lineman of Wisconsin; Fion Hicks, cornerback from Wisconsin. What do their roles look like this year? Hicks has got to show you can make plays. I mean, you just, you got to get in and show you can make plays. Special teams that he's but, gonna, yeah, yeah. And you're going to be on special teams because like Henningsen's probably the same thing. But you're going to you, again, you got a crowded room. When you get opportunities, you got to show you got to show what you can do. And and as an edge rusher, that's getting after the quarterback. Make sure you're setting the edge in the run game. Make sure you can get after the quarterback because that's that's what he is. So I, I know people talk about him as uh, you know a DE and a 34, but really he's more of a, a right DE in a in a 43. And so he's going to have to show that he can either pick up some weight and move again, kick all the way inside, or when he's on the outside, show that he's capable of of being the guy that they uh, uh, that they saw in Wisconsin. All right, there you go. It's a little bit of how this Broncos uh, new draft picks how they fit into this Broncos team for Benjamin Albright. I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos country tonight.